Hello and welcome to episode 72. And this, I suspect, is going to be the first in a series of videos on a slightly different subject to things we've done before. I think it's pretty important that if you're in the business of recording things, either for a job or just for a hobby, um, you can learn how instruments work. It helps you when you record them. It certainly helps you if you play them. And for this video, we're going to be looking at pedal steels. Um, I've discovered that most of the response I get on things like internet forums to these videos is the positive stuff that I get when we talk about things not to do rather than, oh, it's great to do this. So I figured in this video, um, I'd cover something that really, unless you've got a bit of a death wish, you really don't even want to try, and that's pedal steel. The reasons are quite simple. Now, you have to look at yourself. I can only use me as an example here, but when I was a kid, I learned to play the cello. I learned to read music. Um, but I discovered that I actually progressed more on my own once I knew how the instrument actually worked. So once I realised what the strings were on the cello, what my fingers were going to do, while I could read the music and play something that I didn't particularly like, uh, I could actually play lots of stuff by ear. Um, I've always been blessed with a reasonable ear and I can actually pick things up quite quickly. So I discovered that I can play lots of instruments, averagely, and none exceptionally well. Um, and I think a lot of people are perhaps like me. So I picked up a six string guitar, uh, worked out what was different from my cello. And on the cello, you tune the things in fifths. On a bass guitar, you tune them in fourths. On a guitar, it's fourths and the occasional one that's not quite. Um, but you sort of work out how they go and you can buy a book in the old days, go on the internet nowadays, and it will tell you where to stick your fingers. And I discovered that I could actually do that for most instruments. So I had a bit of a project on the go and I was trying to find someone who could play about a couple of dozen notes on a saxophone. And it suddenly occurred to me that I could probably teach myself that. So I borrowed a saxophone, uh, I bought a book, told me where to put my fingers, um, and I learned to play all 12 notes, discovered there were a load of extra ones, learned how to play those, got a sore lip learning that. Um, and I taught myself well enough to play this piece of music that I needed to play. And then I moved on to other things. So I've been lucky enough that I can do that on quite a few instruments. Um, even ones I don't like. I don't like trumpets and I don't like trombones. I can't stand that tickly sensation on my lips. But I could play them well enough to add in a in the middle of a song or a at the top. It's easy. Um, I wouldn't pretend ever to want to go and play those live and in actual fact live music wise bass guitar keys uh, probably a little bit of sax I can manage that reasonably well and my ear and my fingers and my brain work well enough that I can do the job and get paid and that's the important thing um, don't think I want to do it on a trumpet or a trombone I'm just not good enough but until pedal steels came along nothing had actually been a barrier uh, pr progress was a bit slow on some, faster on others, but I managed it. Uh, and I had a bit of a thing and I, I bought a, a Fender pedal steel guitar. Great sounding. Um, and I was actually at the time doing some Carpenter's tracks, so you can probably guess which one of the Carpenter's tracks it was that I wanted to be able to play. Um, then I discovered the problems. The videos on YouTube, quite frankly, are useless. They're either way, 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 way over the top or they're show offs. Um, and you get someone who will start very slowly and they said, and now at playing speed. And as soon as they do it at playing speed, you're completely lost. Now, I have um, a bit of a snag with coordination. I can do three limbs fine. If I add four limbs, one of the others will stop. Now, what I mean by that is I can sort of play the drums, but four limbs means that very often I discover that when I'm doing something clever with my right foot, I've suddenly discovered 
that my left foot has stopped. If I get both feet going, I can use one of my arms. As soon as I add a fourth, it falls apart rapidly. Um, I just don't have the coordination for four limbs. And uh, it means I can't dance either. It just, just doesn't work for me. Now, four limbs is not enough for a pedal steel. You actually need six. Six limbs? Well, I know you haven't got six limbs, but you do have two hands, two feet, and two knees, because pedal steels have actually got levers that operate on your knees, your feet, and then you need two hands. One to hold the slide, so that in your left hand, uh, fingers on the right. Um, you even really should learn to use those finger picks, the strange finger picks that pedal steel people use that sort of go up the curve. I've not mastered that. Luckily, I've got quite tough nails and I'm using those at the moment, which is wrong. Now, the other thing you need to master is music theory. Why? Um, mainly because pedal steels work in a totally bizarre way. If you start to think in terms of chords with letter names, that's going to mess you up a bit because there's a relationship between every single chord and at least two, probably three or four others, and you need to learn all those. The other thing with using YouTube videos as a source is that I think a pedal still is the only instrument I've ever played where you cannot walk up to another player, sit down behind their instrument and play a tune. You can't do it with a, a pedal steel. Pedal steels have weird tunings. This particular pedal steel is tuned in a sort of C9 tuning, really. So you've actually got... and then... at the bottom. So you've actually got... on three notes. Um, and that ninth at the bottom, the, the D at the bottom. Uh, you add in or don't add in as you need. Now, this is where the business about learning music theory comes in. Because if I strum that, let's assume for a minute that's not C and that's going to be chord one. If I stand on just one of the pedals it's this one so if we're playing that takes that one string up. The pedal next door to it takes a different note up. Which means if you do the two together, add that into a full chord. So that's chord one. That's chord four. That's chord one again. So if it's C, it goes to an F and back down to a C. Of course, once you stick your... So now we've got a new chord. Your brain has got to work out what happened there. Okay, we've gone from where on ordinary guitar the nut would be, and we've sort of gone... So, three semitones. So that's actually an E flat now, isn't it? Ooh, E flat, you know, where, where is that going to come in your great scheme of things? But then, of course, if we put the pedals on, we've got the fourth chord in E flat. So your brain has got to immediately go, hang on a minute, uh, E, uh, that's A flat. So you've, you've got to do that particular sort of mathematical trick in your head. And then, of course, the same for every single possible chord that there is in terms of roots. So that's 
it's stretching it. And we've only we've only used a tiny bit. We've gone from chord one to chord four. And we've actually got access to all 12 one to four progressions. Well, there's a, a third pedal on my one, which does the opposite. And it turns that into the five chord, but the seventh version. So by not doing anything, I'll take, if I take my left hand off altogether, we can do that C, up to the F, back to the C, and then using that third pedal, we've got the G7. Oh God, so, and that's only using the highest four notes. Um, okay, we've gone C, we've gone F, we've gone G7. Well, that's that's quite a few sort of songs killed in one go. Um, but what about these knee levers that I mentioned? Well, the tuning on mine gives me two Cs. So I've got at the very furthest one away from me is a C. And then the fourth one is a C. If I press... So I've actually got that top one. So I've got two variations of that C. So I can actually have, uh, if I just do those top four strings, that's our chord one. In this case, it's C. So I can turn the C into a C7. Or if I only push it halfway, somewhere there, there's a major seven. So major seven, dominant seven, See what I mean? So that's just my left knee. Now, what am I doing with the right knee? Um, this one is set to do majors and minors. So if I do the C, then do my right knee, I've gone from the C chord to the C minor chord. So sevenths on the left, minors and majors on the right. And they can all be included with those other chords. So, if I go up to that fourth chord, the F, and that knee lever still works, but does different things. Ooh, see where we're going? This is why those videos on YouTube really don't help that much, do they? But there's something even worse than that. I've just told you how my pedal steel works. I've told you what all, all those levers do. I've told you what the foot pedals do. And I've explained a bit about chords. Now, that's going some. But what happens if you go to somebody else's one? Every single one of those foot pedals and both of the, pe the both of the knees levers on this one can be set to what you want. They're called copedants. And lots of players invent their own. So with mine, by pushing those pedals, two pedals in this case, What happens if you want to do something different? Well, you could actually put them in a different order. Um, the way these things actually work is that the bridge saddles move. So what actually happens is uh, each one of those bridge saddles has two little attachments underneath. One that will pull it lower, one that will pull it higher. And on the end uh, are a load of adjustment screws which adjust exactly how far you can pull the note. So the furthest my one goes on here is a whole tone. So, you know, I've got one that goes from C and it goes down to B flat. Okay, fine. Um, you could, if you wanted, adjust that a bit more. So it goes from C down to A, if you wanted. And it would depend on what sort of music you play. So if your sort of music involves getting quick access to certain chords 
and probably from the perspective of these things, um, playing in a certain style, then you would choose a tuning. So the C9 in my particular case could actually be something completely different and other players may choose, uh, could be a G6 tuning or something if that's what you wanted. So the strings would actually be different names. Uh, the pedals would do different things and the knee levers would do different things. They are totally unique to the player. Now, that really does mean that you sit down behind one that you've never played before and you cannot guarantee that when you stick your foot on a certain pedal, a certain thing is going to happen. There are hundreds of these copedants on the internet that you can actually look at. Famous players have invented their own. So it is a nightmare instrument. If you're starting out with one, what you tend to do is copy somebody else. So you find somebody who plays in a style of music that you perhaps want to learn and you borrow their copedant chart. And then you set your instrument up with screwdrivers and away you go. And I, I know from my particular sort of way of learning things that there is no point in me trying to learn another one when I'm trying to learn this one properly. Now, we've gone through all those, all those notes and we've gone through some chords and each chord leads to another. So in your head, you really need all that music theory stuff because you've got to stop thinking in terms of letter names for strings and chords and start to think of chord numbers. Now, I mean, a lot of people do that for guitar and things, don't they? You know, they, And there's a bit of sort of snobbiness in being able to talk to other people in chord numbers as opposed to chord names. Um, but I think it's absolutely essential on one of these. And you can really fry your brain because of course the thing with these things, let's, let's say, uh, let's, if I put my thing on, then press this, so I've got my new chord. I could play that so many places. If I play that chord there, but is that chord same as that one? So that chord is actually a C7 played there. Take my pedal off and play it here. So there's a C there, there's obviously a C up there, but there's also another C in there. And if I just didn't, if I didn't play the note that was sort of making it a seventh, I've got a C chord again. So if I do my F chord, if I'm trying to find a C, go up to the, that one there is the same as... <sighs> See the problem? Every chord is repeated at different places depending on which one of the pedals you push. Because the country folk, uh, they've, they've got a habit of pressing pedals and the exciting bit is releasing them. So they might play the chord and... And they go down to the new chord rather than going up to a new chord. Mm. Sort of a bit like when you were learning the guitar and you were doing pitch bends and you had to sort of remember to put your finger on the fret, bend it, then twang it, and then you could release the pressure and it would slide down. It's, you know, it's not bending up, it's bending down. Um, and pedal steels are full of stuff like that. So, I think that's probably enough for today. <laughs> um, if this fried your brain completely and you don't want to hear any more, great, don't bother to watch the rest of the series of these ones. Uh, but if you think you could cope with this, then this could be real fun. Um, they're not cheap. Uh, most of the ones that you'll see on the internet for sale, especially on eBay, you need to hear them. You know, it. It's not the sort of thing you could just buy and then say, I don't like it, send it back. Because they're heavy, they're solid, 
the postage to return something to e on an eBay sale on something like this is ridiculous. You know, it's it's going to cost you a lot of money. So realistically, it is a bit of a gamble. So I figured in some of the other videos that we'll do, what we'll look at is if you buy a cheap one, what is the problems? What What's going to happen that's going to really mess it up? And when I bought this one, uh, it wasn't hugely expensive, but it had been pretty unloved. It's in a bit of a stage. It's got lots of chips and bangs on it. And the guy who sold it, sold it with quite an important little tag on the title doesn't play in tune and the solution to making this thing play in tune cost me three pound fifty that's all it was and i'll cover that in some of the future videos so if you fancy a go at pedal steel this might be something you want to watch the next one um but like we said with some of the lights and some of those chinese microphones you know Sometimes it's best not to buy them. And if you're one of those people who needs to learn properly and you need to not do it by experimentation and you haven't got a teacher, you are sunk because they will infuriate you. Uh, good friend of mine, <laughs> the idea that you could play the same chord in zillions of places, I think it just fried his brain and he just said, no, no, I, and he... He didn't even want to play any more notes after he discovered what you had to do. So is it. Six limbs, well, at least six parts of your body are required for this. A good brain, and you do need some elementary music theory skills. Because if you don't know what chord one and chord four are, and most importantly, which notes change when you go from chord one to chord four it's going to throw you completely um, it's essential that you learn what's inside a chord so that you can follow it when it changes and then you'll know where to play it on a pedal steel so this is a taster has it made you go mad and think i never want to see one before or has it made you go Do you know i'd like to get one of those it's a brilliant instrument if you can master it i'm not there yet I'm making slow progress and every time I sit down and play for a couple of hours I get better. You, you, there is definite improvements that you can make. Um, but those damn videos that you see on YouTube where you spend 10 minutes looking at various things and feet and then all of a sudden they play Aah! no it's that that is just not going to happen it's totally impossible. So that's what this video is all about. Should you buy one? And if you do, how can you make it play in tune? And once you've got that, we can look at some of the other stuff on it. Uh, but at the moment, we haven't even needed that, have we? All we've been doing really is open string stuff. And that's pretty hard to get into your brain. Anyway, see you on the next one of these, I hope. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure they'll be that regular because they take ages to do. And you run out of cameras because you've got feet to cover, you've got hands... Oh, it's just it's a trouble. I haven't yet discovered quite how I'm going to get a camera that shows how the knee levers work. You can't really have five cameras, can you, for a YouTube video? That's just a bit daft. Anyway, see you on the next one. Look after yourselves. Take care.